We're going to start today by talking about kinematics of particles. So in the last video, we discussed that kinematics is described as the geometry of motion. So getting into that, we're going to start looking at motion along a curved path. So you can see here on the right, we have a particle, P, that's traveling along this purple curved line. Oops. And we have P traveling at two different times. We have P at time T, and then we have P at time T plus delta T, which just means a change in time. So it's sometime later that particle moved from this first position all the way up here. And we're gonna say that this particle is moving around this origin O. So the first thing that we want to define in terms of the kinematics is the position of the particle. So we're going to do that by using position vectors starting from this origin to the particle at each of these different times. So we're going to draw one position vector, R of T here, and we're going to take another one from the origin up here and we're going to write it as r t plus delta t so the position of the particle is defined as r of t which is a function of time or we can just write it as position vector r the next thing that we want to describe is the displacement and the displacement is just the change in position. So we're going to do that by creating a vector triangle between these two points. And we're going to call that delta r. And we're going to write that as the displacement equals delta r, which can also be written like so. So you could say that vector is really just t plus delta t minus r of t. Now we can describe our velocity as displacement over our change in time. So we can write that as r t plus delta t minus r of t divided by delta t. Now just to give us a little more room, so we have velocity written as such, but we can even simplify it more by writing it as that displacement vector r over delta t. And this is your equation for average velocity. So we can even take that one step further and if we take the limit as t approaches zero of our average velocity plus delta t minus t over delta t this is what's going to give us what's called our instantaneous velocity. So really, this is just giving us the derivative of r. And we're going to write our instantaneous velocity as this velocity, capital V, vector. And again, instantaneous velocity. And in most problems, when they ask you for a velocity, this is what they are referring to when they say velocity, unless they specifically are asking for the average velocity. So the most important thing to remember at this point about instantaneous velocity is that it is always tangent to the path of motion. So if you have, going back to our original sketch, you have your vector r. Your velocity vector is going to look like this. 
So our vector V is going to look just like this. Always tangent to the path of motion. Then we can ask ourselves, well, what is speed? And speed is simply the magnitude of the velocity. And the magnitude is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. That is how you take a magnitude of any vector. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.